Okay, so let's take a look at this more interesting example. Well, <laughs> we, we stepped up by one. We looked at two st a problem with two states to initially in the, in the um, you know, uh, first video. Now we'll take a look at one with three states, essentially. So we got uh, two competing companies offer cable television service to a city. Uh, currently, 15% of all citizens use cable company A, 20% company B. Uh, and then we're going to assume the change in cable sub subscriptions each year is as follows. And you see all the different changes from company A to company B, from company A to no cable, company B to company A, and so on. Um, no cable to company A, and so on. We're going to construct the matrix of transition probabilities for this process. So again, I'm going to draw a diagram to help. In this case, there's actually three states. We've got, you can you can use company A for cable, you can use company B, or you can use none. And, you know, that's certainly true these days. A lot of people don't use cable at all, but um, here's what we have. Okay, and then let's just do these transition probabilities. 20% of company A each each uh, year will switch to company B. So from A to B, we have 20%. Let's just write that as 0.2. Um, and then 10% go from company A to to no cable. They cut the they cut the cord, right? 10%. Of course, what's that leave? Then we need to always think about how many are going to stay for company A. 20% leave, 10% leave. That's 30% total. That leaves 70% stay with company A. Okay. Uh, now 15% switch from B to A. So going back this way, we have 15%. And 5% switch to no cable. It's 0.05. So what percent are going to stay with company B? We got. 15% uh, and 5% is 20%. That leaves 80% to stay. Um, also, 15% switch from no cable to company A. So from no to company A, we have 15% here. And from no to company B, we have 10%. So what percent stay with no cable at all? 15 plus 10, 25 percent switch, that leaves 75 percent to stay. Okay. So that diagram helps sort of clarify what's going on. Now when we construct this matrix of transition probabilities, um, the easiest way is like I showed in, in this, right, to put all your states uh, in order, right? Uh, along the top, these will be the from, so each column is the from state, so to speak, and then uh, along each row in the same order, whatever order you go from left to right, you got to go same order down, top to top to bottom, uh, to be the two uh, states. So again, the probability P12 will be the probability switch from 2 to 1, going that way, you're switching from 2 to 1 would be the probability P12. Right? And so state J to state I is PIJ. Notice J column is the two state uh, or from state and I row is the two state. Um, so my matrix will be and here's my from company A, company B or n you know none, no company, no, no cable. And then our two states here if you will in the same order. They have to be in the same order. It will not work without the same order. Okay. So what do we have? A going to A. A going to A, 70% stays. A going to B. A going to B, 20%. And A going to none, 10%. Keep in mind, the column has to add up to what? What did we say? The column has to add up to what? To 1. Right. You have to go either stay with A or switch somewhere else. Add those up, you get 1. B to A is 15%. Uh, B to B is 80%. And B to none is 5%. Again, add these probabilities up. They add up to 1. Uh, none to A, 15%. None to B, 10%. None to none, 75%. And there it is. There's our matrix. 
So then let's look at you applying this. What percentage uh, what percent of citizens will be use company will be using company A one year from now? Well, first of all, let's get our state vector. So initially at time zero, what do we know? And again, I want this state vector to be used with this, and so I have to do it in the same order. It has to be A, B, none in terms of these uh, percentages. Now, what do we know? Let's go back to the problem. We didn't use the information yet, but now we are. Currently, what? 15% use A, 20% B. So currently, 15% A, 20% B. Uh-oh, they didn't tell us how many didn't have any cable company. Well, can't we figure that out? 15% plus 20 is 35%. That leaves what? 65%. This state, right, we have to add up to 100%, right? You're either using cable company A, B, or none. These are the only options in, in this area, in the city. So, after one year, how do we find that? We multiply, right, by this transition probabilities matrix. And let's do that uh, in the calculator, shall we? So we go to matrix, edit, matrix A will be my matrix P, which is 3 by 3, that's 0 0.7, 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.8, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.75, whoops, and double check that I've entered that in correctly. Looks good. And then I also need uh, this vector here. So let's go to uh, edit uh, B. It will be by 3 by 1 vector. Right. And so now to figure out what is x1 times p times x, or x1 is p times x of 0. So that's my A matrix, P, times my B matrix, which is X of, X of 0, the initial state value. Right. There it is. Keep in mind, in the same order, A, B, and none. So after one year, we wanted to know what company A's, uh, what percentage of citizens will be using company A for cable, 23.25%. Uh, There's our answer. Okay. Now, what about two years from now? Okay, so lots of interactions going on there, but we can find that by simply saying what? What do we say? X sub two is going to be p times x sub one you can know, just p times you know i just found this so i can do i can do p times x sub one so for instance i can go here to matrix and um, p times and i'll just do answer right I, I get the answer that way but notice also this is x sub one is is p times x sub zero so this is uh p squared times x of 0. Right. So another way is I can just come back to my original expression where I did p times x of 0 and insert a squared right, times x of 0. Of course I get the same thing. Again, A, B, and none. So two years from now, what percentage will be using company A? We'll round that up to about 27.8%. Okay. But if we go you know, much further, five years or ten years, you know, instead of just keep multiplying by P, we'll just jump right to this. So in other words, five years will be P to the fifth. 
times x sub 0. And I can do that very quickly in the calculator. Second entry and just edit this to what? Uh, I'll have to insert that to the fifth power. All right, so I can take a to the fifth power and then multiply by b. And we'll approximate that, right? Round that off to the nearest. Please review your rounding rules. I hope everyone knows how to round off. Okay. 286 rounds up to 287. Hopefully we can do that. But at any rate, what's the uh, percentage then? 32. 2.4%. Okay. So that's very clear. So now I can do, you know, 10 years from now, assuming, of course, this trend continues. That's a big assumption, but that, that, that could be certainly possible. Now, um, the, the next question is we talked about steady state solution. So as time progresses, does this uh, state vector, is it approaching a steady state vector? In other words, are we getting approaching a place where the percentage uh, using company A, company B, and no cable company will essentially remain constant throughout uh, each year. And the answer to that is yes, because this is a regular uh, Markov chain, because why this uh, transition matrix is regular. Notice the probabilities, there's no zero probability anywhere here. And remember, we said that was one of the conditions, it's one way to guarantee a steady state solution. So let's find that steady state solution and if you uh, do the homework for, set for this then I want you to show the steady state solution support this way. I want you to show it this way so I'm going to show you how to do that. Alright so I'm going to let um, Q be Q1 Q2, Q3, be the steady state solution. So, so what must be true if Q is the steady state solution? Well, what must be true is if I multiply Q by P, our transition probabilities matrix, our transition uh, matrix there. If I multiply P times Q, what should I get? If this is steady state, meaning each time it doesn't change, we should just get back to Q. In other words, from here on out, every time I multiply by P, I just get back to the same thing. That's what this is the uh, steady state equation essentially we want to solve um, for Q. What problem is this? This should look very well, almost familiar. Instead of using P, think of, we usually use what? A for our matrix. Instead of Q, we usually use X. What about AX equals X? What's that type of problem make you think of? Something we just did. It's an eigenvalue problem. Actually, it's an eigenvector problem, as we'll see. This is an eigenvalue problem. I already know the eigenvalue though, right? Remember, it's supposed to be AX lambda X or, or PQ lambda Q, but what's lambda? One. So notice that the so steady state solution problem is essentially find the eigenvectors uh, for the uh, eigenvalue of one for the matrix P, for the matrix P. Um, and so we're gonna do that. I just remind you how we do that looking at uh, basically if I if these two quantities are equal then Q minus P times Q is 0 and then factoring out a Q what's that leave me not 1 but what the identity minus P right or, or the identities n by n matrix right so basically I want to solve uh, whoops that's bad Q has to be on this side. Sorry. Q has to be on this side, right? So basically, we want to solve this uh, system for Q. And remember, we're interested in obviously non zero. Obviously, if Q is zero, this equation is satisfied. That's not what we're interested in. We're interested in non 
non-zero solutions. And there's actually going to be infinitely many, but um, we, we will show you there's one particular one we want, and we'll explain why. So, so the way to solve this is to look at this coefficient matrix IP, and um, what is that? I is the 3 by 3 identity matrix, and P from the previous page when we were working on it was this. And so, very carefully, we do the subtraction. 1 minus 0.7 is 0 0.3. 0 minus 0.15 is negative 0.15. 0 minus 0.15 is negative 0.15. 0 minus 0.2, negative 0.2. 1 minus 0.8, positive 0.2. 0 minus 0.1, negative 0.1, and so on. And then 1 minus 0 0.75, 0 0.25. So what do we do with this now? We want to solve, so we want to do what? Convert this to reduce row echelon form. And here's what, oh and by the way, uh, well let's see what we get here. Comes out to this. So, so what's our solution? So keep in mind, all right, this is, uh, you know, Q1, Q2, Q3. This is the coefficient matrix. Remember, we you know the, the constants what zero, right? Uh, and technically, this is the zero vector. Sorry, I should have done that. But that's uh, right where that comes from. So don't forget that. And notice we've got two leading ones here. So Q sub three is what uh, uh, is 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 a parameter. I'm not going to assign a, a letter to it this time. Ooh, I'm going to leave it as Q sub 3. Okay, so notice I've got Q sub 1 minus 1.5 Q sub 3 equals 0. And so I know Q sub 1 is going to be 1 and a half times Q sub 3. Q sub 2 plus 2 Q sub 3 is equal to 0 as well, and so Q sub 2 uh, oh, I'm sorry, this should be negative it's going to get a negative probability, and that's not going to that's not going to work okay, sorry about that, that should be negative if you were checking that and wondering um, all right, so there's infinitely many solutions, and normally we parameterize like, like Q3BT, and so we get what 1.5T, 2T, comma you know, T. That would be any solution of that form. But we want only one particular solution. Which one do we want? Well, we must have the following because we're talking about uh, a uh, state vector, probability vector, it's stochastic. The sum of these must add up to what? What do the sum of the probabilities have to add up to? 100% or 1, right? It has to add up to 1. And so here's a quick way to get the, the, the values here. Q1 is what? 1.5 Q3. Q2 is what? 2 Q3. Q3 is what? Q3. <laughs> and so I get 1 half three and a half, four and a half, Q3 equals one, or Q3 is one divided by four and a half, which as a fraction is two ninths. And then I can get the value of uh, Q1 now, because it's one and a half, or three halves, times Q3, two ninths, which is three ninths or one third and Q2 is twice two ninths or four ninths and so here's my steady state solution Q1 one third Q2 
four ninths, Q3, two ninths. Of course, it's good to know what these are approximately, which we know this is that, this is this, and this is this. So the steady state solution is here. And remember, this is A, B, none. So in the long term, as time progresses, this is what that steady state solution is approaching. And if you look at the, you know, so we were looking at here was after one year, here was after two years, here was after five years, and so on. So this is getting closer and closer to this distribution. Or one third, four ninths, and two ninths. So as percentages, then we'll just say 33.3% uh, there, 44.4% there, 22.2% there. So that's what we're that's what we're approaching. And we can also see this if we just keep uh, multiplying by p, or to take a high enough power of p, you know, and see how things are changing, uh, and you can see how rapidly you approach the steady state solution. But the way I want you to show it is this way, as an eigenvalue problem. Because it comes back to exactly, really, eigenvector problem again. It comes back to finding eigenvectors. Uh, or, and we're not really finding a basis for the eigenspace. We're using just one particular eigenvector in there. The one that has what? This, um, this uh, sum equal to 1. Okay. Let me just close then with this fun little example, another way of looking at um, or using uh, the Markov process. So a study has determined that the occupation of a boy as an adult depends upon the occupation of his father and is given by the following transition matrix. Here P is a professional, F is a farmer, and L is a laborer. Those are the only those are the only uh, occupations we have in this society. Okay, professional farmer and labor classified as one of those three. And so, you know, what's this say? So the probability that a father who is a professional, what's the probability a son becomes a farmer? So from professional to what farmer? Ten percent. Ten percent chance he'll change from a professional. A uh, son of a professional will be a farmer. What's the probability the son of a laborer will be a farmer? 20%. What's the probability the son of a farmer will be a professional? 30%. What's the probability the son of a professional will also be a professional? 80%. See how that's working? All right. So with this, assuming this continues through generations, right, what is the probability that the grandchild of a professional will also be a professional? So what are we starting with? Grandch grandchild of what? A professional. So what is our initial state vector? What are the three possibilities? Professional, farmer, labor. So if we are starting with a professional, what's our initial state vector have to be? If we're starting with a professional. What's, what's the probability that the person is a professional, if they are a professional? 100%. What's the probability they're a farmer, if they're a professional? 0%. <laughs> what's the probability they're a laborer? 0%, right? These have to add up to 1, right? So there's our initial state. This is a, a professional. This is a state vector indicating we're a professional. 100%, right? Then, what are we asked to find? We're asked to find the probability that the grandchild is also a professional. So what generation are we looking at? Notice each state, the, 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 the time periods here are generations. That's second generation, right? So I'm literally looking for what? X of 2, right? Which is P squared times X of 0. So I'll let you use your calculator. Check this out. Enter this matrix in. Enter the state vector in, and then do the performance, square P, and then multiply this. When you do that, and I'm going to round off 
three decimal places here, or two decimal places, I get 0 0.69, 0 0.15, 0 0.16. Maybe this isn't rounding, this may be exact, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't double check that. At any rate, okay, that's what we get. So, what is the probability that a grandchild of a professional will also be a professional? The probability that they're also be professional is what? 69%. 69%. Right? So this is a, a, you can imagine this is very useful. Obviously we're doing a simple example. In our society we have many, we could probably classify professions as all sorts of you know, careers or whatever. Um, you know, medical field and, and uh, law enforcement and, and um, et cetera, et cetera. Engineers and stuff. So we can have a big thing. And that could be useful because over time, you know, obviously things change over time, but this can kind of see what, you know, what percentage in the long run are we going to have. So, you know, what should we prepare for? So in this society, in the long run, what proportion of the population will be farmers? What proportion of the population will be farmers? So let's do another steady state problem. So here, I'll use, instead of Q and, uh, I'll use X. Steady state is this, right? Which which means that I have I minus P X equaling zero. That's the that's the problem. So what is I minus P in this case? So I'm just going to take the identity matrix and subtract P from it. So check and see if this makes sense. Okay, um, and so what do we do now? We convert this to reduce echelon form, All right? So I can solve for x here. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to convert to fractions though when I do this in the calculator, and this is what I get. This is negative sixteen sevenths. This is negative six sevenths, and this is zero. All right. So we see our leading ones here, x1 and x2. This is x3. That's a, that's a parameter, right? It's free. Um, I'll just leave it, though, as x3. And what do we have from the first equation? x of 1 minus 16 sevenths x of 3 equals 0. And so x of 1 is equal to 16 sevenths x of 3. Um, x sub 2 minus 6 sevenths x sub 3 equals 0 and so x sub 2 is 6 sevenths x sub 3. Keep in mind x sub 1 plus x sub 2 plus x sub 3 has to equal what? 1. So x sub 1 is 16 sevenths x sub 2 6 sevenths x sub 3 and then x sub 3. So I'll let you solve this and confirm that x of 3 in this case is 7 29 x of 3 is 7 29 therefore x of 1 is what 16 7 times x of 3 equals 16 29 and x of 2 is equal to 6 29ths. And so our steady state solution is 16 29ths for x of 1, 6 29ths for x of 2, and 7 29ths for x of 3, which is approximately these quantities. Remember, professional, farmer, labor in that order. So these are the steady states. So what's our society approaching in the long run? What proportion will be farmers? Right? About 20.7%. Okay. So again, 
very useful. You think about you know much more complicated society. Uh, obviously, things don't always uh, you know this probability matrix might change over time. We can we can look at how that that can be affected, um, and you can take a whole course like I said in Markov processes and dynamical systems. And there's certainly a lot of uncertainty in them. Uh, there's there's areas in dynamic theory like chaos theory that you can look at where you're predicting things like you know I don't know weather you know just real complicated systems and it's really interesting stuff though and at the heart of it though is what matrix multiplication and the eigenvector problem the eigenvalue problem and so it's, this is a really wonderful application a really good way to end the course um, you can look in the book um, in uh, I think it's uh, chapter five near the end of that chapter and there's a section on Markov processes and you can see some other examples but very interesting and I hope you um, find this interesting as well and um, this is really the end of the course for us this semester so um, we will um, have a homework set based on this and um, we'll finish up all right well, that's it.